320 million euros at the end of the year might be something quite interesting for Lithuania when they decided to add their latest air defense system from Sweden. It seems they really wanted to close the year with something quite interesting. And that decision was not merely a symbolic New Year's resolution, but a hard power strategic contract signed in the dying moments of 2025 on December 31st. With that massive financial commitment, Lithuania officially secured a major acquisition of the RBS-70 Belide short-range air defense system from the Swedish defense giant Saab. This move effectively alters the calculation of air superiority in the Baltic region for the coming decade, sending a cold, calculated message to any observers across the eastern border that Vilnius is closing its skies. The Lithuanian Ministry of Defense is not acting in isolation with this procurement. They are binding themselves into a complex trilateral framework agreement involving Saab and a Swedish Defense Material Administration, or FMV. This arrangement acts as a political and logistical insurance policy, ensuring that the critical flow of spare parts and ammunition remains unbroken a harsh lesson learned by many European nations from recent high-intensity conflicts where stockpiles evaporated in weeks. Although the ink is dry on the contract, the reality of a congested global defense industry forces Lithuania to play a long game. Deliveries of these advanced units are scheduled to commence in 2028 and will flow gradually until 2032. This delivery timeline highlights the critical nature of modern defense planning. Lithuania is essentially securing a vital slot in the production queue before Saab's factory capacity is completely saturated by panic buying from other nations securing their own borders. The pressing question for global military analysts is specific. Why the RBS-70 belied? Why did Vilnius reject more common user-friendly systems like the American Stinger or the Polish Purin, which are readily available nearby? The answer lies in a single technical distinction that changes everything on a modern electronic warfare heavy battlefield, laser beam riding. Most manned portable air defense systems or man pads operate on the principle of infrared hunting. Missiles like the Stinger or Igla use sensors in their nose cones to hunt the heat signature of an aircraft's engine. While proven, this technology has a fatal flaw in the modern era. It can be deceived. Modern fighter jets and attack helicopters are equipped with advanced flare dispensers that confuse heat-seeking sensors causing missiles to veer off into empty sky. Furthermore, Direct Infrared Countermeasures, or DIRCM, systems can fire lasers directly into the eye of a heat-seeking missile, blinding it instantly. The RPS-70 Belide refuses to play this game. It does not hunt for heat. Instead, the operator targets the aircraft through an advanced optical sight and fires an invisible and encrypted laser beam. The missile's receiver is located in its tail, facing backward toward the launcher, not the enemy. Upon firing, the Bolide missile accelerates to supersonic speeds, riding inside that laser corridor like a train on a track of light. The tactical implication is brutal. Enemy pilots cannot use flares to trick this missile. They could dump their entire payload of countermeasures, but the Bolide will simply not care because it ignores heat entirely. As long as the operator on the ground maintains a visual track, the missile will intercept. This makes the RBS-70 one of the most immune to electronic warfare systems in existence, a mandatory capability for survival in the giant electromagnetic spectrum of Eastern Europe. The specific Bolide variant purchased by Lithuania represents the most lethal iteration of this lineage. It has undergone massive upgrades from the older MK2 version. The Bolide achieves speeds exceeding Mach 2, providing the kinetic energy necessary to chase down targets attempting high G evasion maneuvers. It boasts an effective range of 9 km and an intercept altitude of 5 km. However, the most terrifying feature, often overlooked in civilian analysis, is its warhead. Saab designed the Bolide with a unique dual-purpose payload, a fragmentation charge containing thousands of tungsten pellets to shred airframes, combined with a shaped charge at the center to penetrate armor. 
This shaped charge capability allows the missile to punch through 200 millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor. This provides extraordinary flexibility for Lithuanian field commanders facing chaotic multi-domain threats. If an enemy force is grounded by bad weather, but launches a mechanized assault with light armor vehicles like BTRs or BMPs, the Belide missile can be instantly repurposed into a lethal anti-tank weapon. This dual role capability, ground to air and ground to ground, is absent in competitors like the French Mistral 3 or the Stinger, making this 320 million euro investment highly efficient as it addresses two dimensions of warfare with a single platform. Comparatively, looking at the Mistral 3, we see a divergence in doctrine. The Mistral is a fire and forget system. The operator locks on, fires, and takes cover. The RBS-70 demands a brave, highly trained operator who must guide the missile until impact, a method known as manual command to line of sight. However, this risk is paid for unjammable accuracy. In a Baltic scenario predicted to be saturated with GPS denial and radar jamming, a manual optical system like the RBS-70 often becomes the only reliable weapon when digital sensors go blind. Crucially, this deal marks a shift from static devices to mobile defense. The package includes integration into the MSHORD, or Mobile Short Range Air Defense. Lithuania is moving beyond soldiers hiding in tree lines with tripods. They are mounting RBS-70 NG launchers and Giraffe-1X radars onto agile tactical armored vehicles. The Giraffe-1X radar is the force multiplier here. It features drone tracker technology designed to detect small targets with low radar cross-sections, such as reconnaissance UAVs or loitering munitions like the Lancet would often escape the naked eye. Mounting this system on vehicles enables shoot and scoot tactics, detect, engage, and relocate within seconds before the enemy can triangulate the launch signature and retaliate with artillery. These mobile units are set for deployment in 2027, creating a dynamic moving shield for ground forces. From a macro strategic perspective, this purchase completes Lithuania's layered anti-access area denial architecture. Throughout 2025, Vilnius aggressively acquired medium-range systems like NASAMs and the German Iris TSLM. These systems guard the high and medium altitudes against jets and cruise missiles. However, expensive radar-guided missiles have a blind spot. The very low, nap-of-the-earth flight profiles used by helicopters and cheap drones. The RBS-70 Belide fills this critical gap as the final goalkeeper. It provides an economic solution to the drone threat. Using a million-dollar NASAMS missile to kill a cheap drone is a bankrupting strategy. Using a Belide is financially sound and tactically sound. This creates a dilemma for an aggressor fly high and die by nasums, or fly low and be destroyed by the Belide. Minister of National Defense Robertos Cajunes was explicit that this contract ensures an uninterrupted supply of ammunition. This phrasing signals readiness for a prolonged conflict, not a short skirmish. By securing a supply chain from Sweden, now fully integrated into NATO, Lithuania ensures its logistics lines across the Baltic Sea remain viable, providing strategic depth even if the vulnerable Suwalki Gap is threatened by a ground blockade. Ultimately, Lithuania's decision to close 2025 with this massive contract is a declaration that air defense is the core of their sovereignty. Facing hybrid warfare and drone dominance, they chose resilient, unjammable technology over convenience. They are buying the certainty that their airspace remains a no-go zone. Lithuania has drawn a red line in the Baltic sky, and that line is guarded by a laser that cannot be deceived. So what do you think about the news above? Let me know.